All right, guys, I have a microwave here, and it's giving us some problems. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It's pretty easy to take these apart. Just uh, take it down from the wall, all with a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and then you just have to remove the Phillips screws all the way around it. And in about 10 minutes, you can have it looking just like this. Once you have the cover off, and yes, make sure it's unplugged, you can see uh, there's a little pouch right here. There's a little like pocket right here and you'll find schematics or a manual in that location. So it's not paper, it's actually in this plastic pouch, but inside the, the pouch, you'll see schematics. Well, my videos can definitely be long and boring and drawn out. Um, so I'm gonna try to cut to the chase here. I already cut a lot of the video out. The first thing that I always like to do is just uh, ream or exercise all the connections okay so if you have a connector just pull it out put it put it back in pull it out put it back in you know do that maybe like 10 times because there could be just a little bit of corrosion on those terminals and uh, moving it in and out can help improve that connection and with this microwave that's exactly what happened I didn't have to wait for the interlock switches to arrive from Amazon um, just by exercising the uh, connections, the microwave started working fine. And in fact, you can hear it right now. My wife's cooking in the kitchen. But those are the two things that I typically do with a microwave. You can exercise the connections, and then if that doesn't work, replace the interlock switches. Those are the two high failure items because one, the microwave is above the oven and it receives all the steam and all the grease. And then the interlock switches go out just by uh, usage. You know, every time you open that door, it's disconnecting the circuit and there's a little arc and there's a little bit of uh, corrosion or, you know, whatever on that switch. So it's going to wear out and there's going to be some resistance in. So exercise your connections and replace the interlock switches. Um, either one or both of those will probably fix your microwave. But let's get back to the video and I'll show you another microwave that needs to be fixed but uh, I, I fixed it in a slightly different way. But So the first one I fixed by exercising the connections, and then but I ordered the door switches for that and I never used them. So now here's the second microwave that I'm gonna fix, and I actually used the uh, door switches from the first microwave on the second microwave. But the door switches that I ordered were not for the second microwave. They didn't fit exactly, and you'll see that in the video. So I do recommend getting the right switches for your microwave. I made my door switches work, and I don't know, I'm just crazy like that, but uh, try to get the right ones and you'll probably have an easier installation. Looking at the schematic, it's relatively easy to understand. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you guys through it. Over here you have the plug. The middle one is ground, so they don't use that one. I mean, it's tied to ground, but you know it's not used throughout the circuit. So these two highs and lows here are connected and it just splits off and it goes throughout the circuit like this. So in the end, so what's happening with this uh, microwave, it's, it's important to understand that everything works, but it's just not getting hot. And so we have to kind of uh, trace the steps or trace what we think is wrong and, and go backwards. Here's our, here's our main magnetron right here. This is what uh, creates the microwave energy and creates the food or, or makes the food to get hot. So if this is not getting power, I would backtrack a little bit and see what's wrong from there. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna see two things that are in the way of the magnetron getting energy. So here's the interlock switch, the secondary interlock switch, and the magnetron thermostat. So if these are open or if they have bad connections, then our magnetron will be inoperative. Now let's go to the other side. All right, my phone got cut off here, but let me start this part over again. Okay, looking at the magnetron, we're gonna trace that down to this side of the uh, input, and there's two main uh, components here which control that. Um, there's a relay right here on the PCB board. And in order to replace this, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, the relay itself is probably cheaper, but we'd have to do some soldering and, and all that stuff. Um, so I'm not going to replace that first. 
But if we continue on, the source of this relay is actually over here, uh, the primary interlock switch, and it's right next to the secondary interlock switch and the thermostat. So uh, there's a whole lot of switches going on here, and again, those are physical things that fail. Now this manual does not give us part numbers, but uh, it does tell us where they are. So primary interlock switch and secondary interlock switch. Uh, if we go over here, here we go. Okay, so we have the door switches here. We have L, M, and N. So that is the secondary interlock switch, the monitor interlock switch, and the primary interlock switch. So I didn't explain it very well, but we actually had three microwaves go out in one week. So our microwave went out, we had a tenant's microwave go out, and then also my mom was having problems with hers. So we actually have three microwaves in this house at this moment. The first one was repaired just by moving the connectors around, or as I call it, exercising. This one actually had burnt popcorn in it, and my mom swore that there was something wrong with it but my mom was scared to use it again. So yeah, all I did was uh, wash the smoke off of it and it works fine and now I'm selling it. So now this is the one that actually needed more repair action. And in the next clip, you're gonna see this one not working and my efforts to restore this one. Here we are with another example. This is a Kenmore over the range microwave. And yes, it's a scratch and dent. But, for the most part, it's in pretty good condition, physically. I did steal the glass plate out of here, and I'm going to include it over there with that one. And that one is already for sale. But, I still want to get this thing working. Uh, I'm going to take the cover off and have you guys follow along and just kind of see what's going on with it. From here, I'm going to remove all the screws associated with this black cover. Additionally, I have to remove this one. The silver cover here and then the entire uh, black cover will come off. The symptoms with this microwave is that it, there was just absolutely no indication so no uh, response, no power, no nothing on the electronic keyboard, uh, no display or anything so uh, it sounds like a dead fuse and already I can tell you it's a fuse so with a quick visual inspection I came in here I looked at the fuse and you can see it's blown. Let me zoom in here and I'll try to get some numbers. You can see 125 volts, 20 amps. When replacing the fuse, check operation of the door interlock and interlock monitor circuit and replace components as indicated in service manual. If I were to replace the fuse and the interlock switches, that might be my best bet for reliability. Well, I replaced the fuse Good news, I removed the interlock switches. You see there's two here, and there's another one that's a little bit harder to see because it's black. But it's right here. And I had to disassemble the microwave just a little bit more. Uh, there was one screw holding on the panel. And I also removed a screw down here uh, for the fan. Oh, and good news guys, there was a schematic in here. So this is the uh, the Kenmore something, I don't know. So this is a Kenmore microwave and it was actually, uh, I think it was either stuffed in here uh, or in here somewhere, I'm not sure, but yeah, so this uh, schematic is actually just like the other microwave, almost identical. So that's why, you know, most of these appliances, they're all the same. So this Kenmore assembly is a little bit different from the other one uh, that I showed you earlier. But uh, on the other assembly, on the other microwave, the switches were just screwed in. And you didn't have this large plastic piece to disassemble. Alright, so these switches are held into the plastic with little clips. Now here's the switches I received from Amazon. And one of my switches is a little bit different because uh, there are two wire positions here. If I want to use one wire terminal, I can and just cover up the other one with a heat shrink or something. I'm just trying to use what I got so I don't have to order another bunch of switches from Amazon. Alright, I want to show you guys something kind of important. If you're going to switch these, you got to 
you pay attention to what you're switching. Now, uh, there are two types of switches. There's a press to open switch and there's a press to short switch. So this one uh, is a press to short switch. And I want to show you what I mean. I just have it on my vice grips right now because I pulled it out of here and uh, I don't want to lose uh, control of it. I don't want to forget which one it was. Okay, so when I hit the button, it shorts out. Okay, so I need to find another one that is a press to short. Okay, so this one, I'm going to press it. This is one of the new ones, and it's a press to short, so that's good. This is one that I can replace it with, but I'm not, I just want to show you real quick. So I haven't even pushed it yet, and it's already shorted. Okay, and then when I push it, now it opens up. Okay, so this is a push to open switch. I don't want to get them mixed up. Okay. I'm just going to set that aside and in my in my plastic housing where I pulled this out, I'm going to replace the switch I pulled out with exactly the right switch. So this is the uh push to short switch here. Just like that. All right, I need three hands, but I'm actually using my feet to hold the vice grips. I'm gonna push in on the tab. There we go. All right, so I got the switch out. Now I'm gonna check this one as well. Now this one's gray in color. Maybe that's a sign. And there we go, it's already shorted, and look at the ohms on it. This one has a higher resistance on it, so that might that might be the problem. Okay, so we're gonna hit the button, and now it's gonna open. Okay, so I believe this is the other push to open switch, but I'll check it out real quick. Okay, yeah, see it's already shorted and it has a better lower resistance on it. Now there's the open. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to put this one exactly where I want it to go. That's backwards. All right. So now I have one more. So let me get my my feet again. There we go. Alright, see what we're working with here. Okay, this is an open. Now it's a short. Okay, so this is a push to short. And I have two switch positions here on this switch. I just have to select the right one. So, see it's not this one. That's a push to open, so I need a push to short. Okay. There we go, push to short. So, now I can't forget, the two terminals that are closer to each other are the ones I want, not this third one. So this one is trash. This one here, what do you guys think? Should I just bend it? That's the one I don't want. I want to break it all the way. I don't want to break my switch. There we go. So now I have a push 
to short switch. And guys, you can get the right switches on Amazon. I just happen to have these uh, in my cabinet. I was going to repair my other microwave with these, but then I didn't need it. So then I had these just laying around. So the other cabinet uses used a slightly different uh, variation of switches. Uh, this one being different, but now it's the same, you know, not a big deal. So I'm going to throw this in there. There we go. All new interlock switches. And I just have to throw this assembly in the microwave and I believe we'll have a functioning microwave. Well guys, I messed up and I wanted to show you uh, my, my issue. So the uh, terminal here, so here it is here. I'm trying to get it in focus. The actual metal terminal is thinner on the original switches so just make sure that when you go to buy the switches make sure that you buy the right ones for your brand spend a couple minutes and uh, make sure the part numbers are interchangeable or at least the brand is on the description or something so the housing for these switches are exactly the same they fit they have the same function and everything but just the terminal is wider uh, on the new switches than the old switches. So I'm not able to use my new switches So uh, but I will I will use them. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is uh, Take them back out of that plastic housing. I'm gonna use my angle grinder Just shave off a little bit of metal and I'm gonna stick it back in there. You know, I can do that in uh, in like 10 minutes, you know instead of uh, waiting for Amazon again and spending another 10 bucks Here you can see the metal that I ground off and it's looking pretty good. So I ground this terminal here to match the width of that one. Now you can see all my terminals are in place for the interlock switches. I have one, two, and three. Now I have all the connectors in and you can see there's just one screw really just holding this on. Here we are guys, here's the function test. I got my Las Vegas mug in there full of water. And uh, I got my cover on, just sitting there right now. There's no screws or anything. So let's give this thing a test. Press start. Oh, there it goes, all, all by itself, all right. Well, no fuse has blown so far. So it's probably heating up. All right, let's give it a test. Woo! Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's a little steam on there. Yeah, she's she's working, guys. What have we learned today, guys? We learned how to fix a microwave, and of course, I replaced the fuse, but that's not really what I'm talking about. Um, I went in and uh, exercised all my connectors. I just, you know, hit the clip and just kind of moved them in and out, in and out, in and out. And then I replaced the interlock switches. Okay, all the door switches get replaced. And that was pretty much what that sticker was saying. If the fuse blows, replace the switches, and then, of course, replace the fuse as well. So, yeah, this microwave is, is good to go. Uh, of course, this is only a, like an instantaneous test. It's not a long-term test, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to test it for a month or anything, you know. It heats water. It's good to go, so I'll, I'll button it up and, uh, you know, I'll test it a couple more times and I'll maybe I'll even give it away on uh, Facebook Marketplace or something. So enjoy the journey and you can do it. Thanks for watching.